Hi, my name is Stijn Omus, and today I'm going to talk about field of view. So today's lesson will teach you the concepts and um, we'll do some comparisons between animals and humans and artificial cameras. So basically the field of view is the edge of all possible visual directions. So basically if I had the camera view, oh, that's not going well. So these are the edges and there's an edge and there's a corner. And those are the extreme visual directions. And the field of view is the whole thing that, we, that uh, an animal or a human or a rabbit or a camera can see. And one of the questions that I'm going to answer is what, what are the differences between the field of view of humans and rabbits and cameras? And in the end, I'm also going to tell you why there's such a big difference between camera field of view, like the camera I'm looking at right here, and humans and rabbits. So here's a picture from the book, The Analysis of Sensations by Ernst Mach. Uh, from 1886 and um, the view is from his left eye so if I close my right eye that's what I oh for you is this um, that's what I see and f let me point out some things like you can actually see his nose and his moustache and his legs and, and I think on the left part it doesn't extend as far as it could but um, one of the things you can see, it's an asymmetric view from the left eye. And you have a sense of the size. And visual angles I will define as, um, uh, let's look at the 90 degrees there, the second from the left. So the black line is straight ahead. And then the big dot is the eye or the camera. And then the visual angle extends symmetrically left to right and then the total is 90 degrees in this case. So 45 degrees on the left, 45 degrees on the right. And you can see a bunch of examples, um, for example on the right, 180 degrees, so that's almost what we see. And if we go into that, what is the field of view of humans? So on the left, the horizontal view. Um, and it's maybe even more than 180 degrees. So for me now, I'm looking at the camera, but I can actually see behind my glasses and I see there's a bookcase. I know it's there, but I can also see parts of it. Um, and sometimes in books you can see 200 degrees or sometimes even 220. So that's this angle. If we look at the vertical field of view, it's less, so the top end is my brow. I'm looking at my brow now. And the bottom part, I look at my cheeks and my nose is in the way. So that's less, that's about 135 uh, degrees in humans. And I have to say, this is the left eye and right eye combined. I'm not gonna talk about the overlap in visual fields between the left and right eye, that's for another lesson. Uh, but these are the, um, the rough numbers. If we look at rabbits, then the visual field is almost, well, it's the whole 360 degrees. So in general, sometimes they say that prey will have eyes on the side of their heads so they can look around. And then predators, like we are, we have our visual field mostly in front of us. Um, what else can I say? There's a small overlap in the visual field of the left and the right eye of the rabbits, and they can see some stereo there. But it's um, big and it's interesting. So a field of view you can define or simplify it in a horizontal one and a vertical one, and I've been talking about that so far. And then if you look at the human uh, field of view, it has a, like an elliptical shape, that's the blue area, and roughly it's 180, yeah, sorry, 180 by 135. But if I look at the orange part, 
then it's basically a standard picture if I take a picture with my iPhone. Then it's uh, 67 degrees horizontally and 53 degrees vertically. So that's way smaller than the field of view of a human. And this, um, let me go back to, so you can see my iPhone. So there's actually two cameras here. So the bottom one is a standard camera and the top one is wide angle camera. And I took two pictures of my uh, tiled floor in my kitchen. And on the left, you see the standard camera. Um, so there's about three by three tiles in the picture, roughly. Uh, it's linear perspective, so straight lines in the world, on the floor in this case, are also straight lines in the image. On the right side, you see the wide angle camera. And you can even see my feet on the bottom. I think I have to repair my right sock there. Uh, but one thing is that you see much more tiles. So it's like five by four roughly. So there's many, many more tiles. And the other thing that's interesting also is that um, straight lines in the world are still straight lines in the projection. And uh, we will see later why that's important. So, and later means the next slide. So I have to switch on my iPhone uh, first because of, before I go to the next slide. And, no, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm gonna compare the standards with the wide angle camera and the standard camera is the orange region here and the wide angle is the blue. And now I'm going to the live demo. So what you see here, and then you see it moving, is a bunch of table tennis balls on my table. I needed to use a cloth there because otherwise they would um, disappear on me. Um, and this is the standard camera. If I now switch to the wide angle view, well, it's a wider angle, so I need to get closer to really get all the table tennis balls in view. And you can see that the ones on the edges look like eggs, but let's go to the um, top left, the orange one, and put that one in the middle, and now you see it's round. But if I put it back on top, you see it's um, elliptical in the projection. So there's quite a distortion here for um, the, tennis, the table tennis balls that are on the edges. All right, so, Let's um, recap here is that if we take a standard camera with a 70 by 50 degrees roughly visual angle, field of view, then uh, a ball that is round in 3D also looks round in 2D. Although if you look at the one on the top, sorry, on the bottom left, you see a slight deformation there already. But on the right, it really gets uh, the top right and the bottom left white table tennis balls almost look like eggs. So the question now is, uh, even though this is apparently technologically possible, why don't we use even wider angle cameras? Um, and a related question, why is the field of view of humans or animals in general, camera so different? Well, those images are not made for the camera, they're made for us. And we do not like those distortions. So if you have a wide angle camera and there's lots of um, round objects or close to round objects in the scene, for example, heads of humans, they look so distorted that, it, that it's uncomfortable for us. We, we don't like to look at that. But if you look at it from the point of view of the uh, machine, yeah, of, the, of this nice iPhone, then even bigger distortions is irrelevant. They don't care. And if we 
go into computer vision and in um, a lot of lessons after this we'll get into computer vision quite a lot is that computers don't care about that distortion what they care about is is that there is an object in the field of view in the um, on the image of the camera and I want to inter interpret that in the sense of what's going on in the world so the computers don't care about distortions they do care about the high or large field of view actually it's in a lot of applications it's nice to have a large field of view also for computers but the only reason that standard cameras do not do that is that the product of those cameras are images and those images are for us like you're looking at me now um, moving in front of the camera and talking and that's a small field of view the cameras uh, has a uh, is at some distance and the focal length has some distance and it all looks fine my head is not too much distorted so that's my lesson for today hope you enjoy it if you want to know more go to my website there's a link here thanks for watching